What if there are CIA documents that literally reveal the way reality works, that show who we are at a core level, and what if there were simple hacks we could use that would show us how to completely transform our lives from the inside out? Now, what I am referring to is the declassified CIA documents that research something that is called the Gateway Process, or also known as the Gateway Experience. These are a specific training system that shows people how to, in a way, explore their own consciousness. And when you learn the aspects and the techniques that I share with you in this video, you will be able to expand your own sense of awareness about yourself and how you relate to reality itself. Even deeper than that, what are the other people in your reality? What are that of situations and circumstances that you attract into your life? What are the abilities that we have that we have been literally just not believed we could even do, but yet the government knew about it and would have that of people trained to do certain things, whether it's like Project Stargate, for example, where what they would do is train psychic people to balance out their brain waves in a certain way so they could in a way weaponize that against different military defenses. What if we could use that in our own way, in a positive way? Beyond all of this, there were these documents that I'm referring to. I've made another YouTube video about this before, but there was one page that was missing. Out of this whole entire 28 page document, there was that of one page, page number 25, that went missing. And what happened is this page, there was number 24, there was number 26, and 25 was a mystery. And for some reason, when the CIA finally had that declassified, they left out page 25. And what if page 25 had extremely powerful information in it that if we really understood would actually be us taking our power back in a very powerful way that would then change the way we show up in the world? Well, for literally, I found out about the gateway experience, the gateway process in 2017. I used it. I started using the training systems, expanded my own level of consciousness. And I had no idea that there was a missing page though from when I read the CIA documents. There was that missing page 25. Well, we have that page now. It is something that has been acquired because Vice, many of you have heard of Vice. Vice is that of a like research news outlet. I don't even know what you call it. But anyways, they documented and did some research on the Gateway Experience and the CIA documents. And they reached out to the Monroe Institute themselves which originally the Monroe Institute is the one that did all this, this type of training systems that I'm talking about. They're the ones that created that of the gateway experience, the gateway process. They reached out to the Monroe Institute and basically what they said is we never held back any of the research when we gave those documents to that of the CIA. The CIA was the one that took the page out. So after there was the vice getting a hold of that of the Monroe Institute, talking to them about it. They said originally that they were going to like disclose page 25, but then what happened is there was a change in management. And then finally they revealed page 25. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. We're going to be talking about the whole entire system of understanding how you can apply what they've used in a very sometimes dark way what it reveals about reality and how we can transform our lives from the inside out simply from this information. Now, first off, just to give this a little bit of a background, I have a whole YouTube video that you can watch on this that's titled, I Tried the Gateway Process and Unlocked a New Reality. Um, back in 2017, basically, someone in my family, a relative of mine who saw my YouTube videos, basically recommended to me. This person said, if you get that of these these gateway experience meditation CDs, they will completely transform your life. And this was a relative of mine that worked for some form of government, like behind the scenes, not even government, but behind the scenes thing where we never really knew what he did, but he was always a very esoteric thinker. He was always somebody that was like into very esoteric things. I remember growing up and seeing books around the house uh, 
that or the Edgar Casey, who was the sleeping prophet, as he was called. And basically, um, as towards the end of his life, because uh, he died like five or six years ago, no, four or five years ago, um, he saw that I was making YouTube videos and he saw that I was open to this esoteric information. And that's when him and I really connected. We really connected the last couple years of his life. And one of the things he told me was, if you want to expand your consciousness, he's like, you say that in all your videos, um, then get that of the gateway process. Get the gateway experience. He said they're from the 70s and the 80s, completely transform you know, his life back in, the, back in the day. And he basically said, if you do these meditations, these processes, it'll change your life. So what I did is I got these meditation CDs called the Gateway Experience. It uses a technology that's called HemiSync. HemiSync has to do with balancing the left brain and the right brain uh, in a way that where then you can access higher states of consciousness. It uses a lot of guided imagery and guided meditations. Uh, it helps you understand more about your energetic body. It talks a lot about out-of-body experiences, remote viewing. Uh, even just beyond that though, how to get to certain states of consciousness to like influence the hologram of reality, which by the way, in the CIA documents, it's something it does talk about. It talks about the research findings from people that went into that of these processes. Basically what I did, I was also for my grandpa because he was on, okay, <laughs> just kind of revealed who it was. Um, but it, it was something that I, uh, I, I put into like uh, on an iPod for him so he could listen to these C these CD meditation CDs but while he was on dialysis because he was on dialysis and that was a way during the pain of dialysis he would just leave his body and he would use these meditation CDs to do that which I thought was really cool he was also a very interesting person that could see auras uh, he would go to like church with my grandma even though he wasn't a big church goer just because he wanted to see the energy in the crowd change. He said that the auras around people when the pastor was sharing stuff would like switch as they were learning different things and he thought that was like so cool to see. So he was always a very esoteric thinker. Nonetheless, told me to get these meditation CDs. I did. I spent $400 on them back in 2017. This is right when my YouTube channel was starting to grow and uh, they were used. I couldn't find it for cheaper and they're all authentic and everything. I still have them to this day and I started listening to them. And as I did, I started to understand more about my subconscious mind. Um, I started to also have different types of dreams and like I would go deeper into my own subconscious mind. But nonetheless, there's a whole video on that if you wanna know like my experience of using these meditation CDs and how you can in a way like hack into it yourself. Uh, but nonetheless, Let's get to that of understanding what a lot of these, this information you know, shares, what it, what it reveals about reality. One of them is that when we go down to paragraph 12, which is literally title 12, it talks about holograms. It says, energy creates, stores, and retrieves meaning in the universe by projecting or expanding at certain frequencies in a three-dimensional mode that most easily understood by using an example cited by Bentov, this is Itzhak Bentov that they're talking to, in which he asked the reader to visualize a bowl of water into which pebbles are dropped. And when, if you were to do that and then freeze it, you'd be able to then see the ripple pattern within it to understand that every single part of it is connected. What this reveals and what it shows is that it is most likely a hologram that we live within where everything in our reality is connected to everything else. And a big part of the teachings of what we learn in here is about how we can, in a way, hack this hologram, hack this understanding by understanding that we are a part of it and it is a part of us. It talks about the consciousness matrix. And some of my favorite parts of this document have to do with the different visualization techniques that are in the gateway experience. And it talks a lot about how we can use our own subconscious mind to reveal different information. So there's different states you can get into to problem solve. When you're in that state, it becomes very clear as how you can problem solve different things in your life. Another aspect of this though, that's probably my favorite is called patterning. Basically what it says is the technique of patterning recognizes the fact that since consciousness is the source of all reality, our thoughts have the power to influence the development of reality and time space that is the more complicated the objective 
sought, the more radically it departs from our current reality. The more time the universal hologram will need to reorient our reality sphere to accommodate our desires. Monroe trainers caution against attempting to force the pace of this process because the individual could succeed in dislocating his existing reality with dramatic consequences. Basically what it's mentioning is that everything is consciousness. When you're in this patterning state or this what's called repatterning state, you're patterning different energies into your consciousness. Almost think of it like there's a collective field around your body. This is what my grandpa was talking about when he could see auras. There's an energy that goes around your body, which the cumulative and the momentum of energy of the thoughts you continually think go within your energetic field. Now what happens is what it shows in this document is there's a form of toroidal field that goes around the, the body and even around the universe called a torus. And what happens is this toroidal field has within it those energy patterns. Now, as you shift your own energy, when you're in a certain state of consciousness, it's like that pattern continues to circle around your body to where then you are more likely to perceive in reality things that are equal to that energy. So this has to do with understanding the power of our thoughts. This has to do with understanding the power of our own energy. And when we use our subconscious mind, which is also considered our right brain, the right side of our brain, and we activate that, we can get different information that can radically shift our energy in a very powerful way. Now, everything I've shared with you up until this point is stuff that I enjoy, that I've got a lot of value out of. Color breathing is another one where you visualize different colors that have a different intention on healing your body, and as you do, it like can heal different parts of your organs, different aspects of life. A lot of this too, honestly, I believe can be very powerful permission slips. Whether it is like inherently true that red does this to this organ, what if it's more so the intention and the belief behind it that then allows you to having the intention to heal your body, to bring energy there, and where energy goes, attention goes, energy goes. Now, it talks about the idea of future, uh, connection, quantum field. Now let's go to page 25, okay? There's two or three sections of 25 I wanna mention. Now. The most powerful part of this whole entire document that I believe where page 25 was taken out and the reason I believe it has been taken out and now it has been revealed is because page 25 reveals a little bit more about religion and also about the nature of our reality. But even beyond that, it talks more about the activation of the pineal gland the pineal gland, the third eye. Now, whereas a lot of the explanations of the gateway process, the gateway experience has been on that of left and right brain coherence, which really what it also mentions it does is it actually lowers the energy of the left brain because we have been in our society, the left brain is related to logic, to planning, to management, uh, to numbers, left brain. A lot of, in society, we have been kind of primed and conditioned to be more left brain thinkers, to always be in the left brain, to always kind of be in that logical mind. The right brain is the part of us that is intuitive, the part of us that is very, very creative, that more so goes with the flow, that trusts the universe more so. It's a very different energy than that of the left brain. Now, in that of the gateway experience, one thing it does is it tampers down the energy of the left brain and increases the energy of the right brain, which is the subconscious mind, intuitive insights. Now, here's the thing that it mentions about that of these two processes, and here's where there's actually this deeper level in page 25, and that is that it actually doesn't have to do with choosing the left brain or the right brain or toning either side out. It's that when there's this complete balance, holistic balance within the brain, that's when the pineal gland activates. So first off, there's a section 35. It says left brain limitations. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. Um, I might put a little snippet of it here so you can see it. But basically it talks about how much of the 20th century physics is using left brain linear quantitative style of reasoning to approach the same knowledge which the mystics of the old apparently acquired in a holistic intuitive right brain style. We're talking about the information of the mystics from thousands of years, different civilizations, different enlightened masters. It did not come from just a logical perspective of the left brain. 
this is talking about the limitations of that. This is one of the reasons a lot of people will study spirituality and try to look at it through a very small lens of the left brain and it doesn't make sense. It's literally a different language and it's a different part of the brain. This is also, by the way, if you want to compare this to any other styles of teaching, look at, for example, Freud. We talk about Freudian um, knowledge that of like looking at your inner child trauma, looking at why you are the way you are. We have very much left brain was very Freudian. And we look at the childhood trauma, what happened in our childhood, understanding it, the more you understand it, the more you heal. On the other side of that, you had Carl Jung, Union psychology. He believed more in something called synchronicity. He believed more in the subconscious mind. He did a lot of dream work. They were actually colleagues and friends. They had very different perspectives though of how to go about healing. Now, in an interesting way, a big part, I think the, the, a big part that was losing itself from that of a lot of the Freudian teachings, or Freud, was that it was missing this right brain component of synchronicity. Now there's this interesting thing I was also doing. I was watching a, a video that was kind of talking about this and talking about the, how expectation is a very left brain thing. Anytime you expect something to happen, you put this pressure on something to happen. You also limit that thing happening. Imagine there's an infinite number of great things that could happen in your life. Infinite number of realities that exist. An infinite number of things the universe could give you. But then when we expect, that's when things tend to create resistance. That's when it's almost like the universe doesn't show us the magic of itself. When if we just simply trust the right brain and we trust and we go with the flow, it reveals itself in even a more magical way. I was watching this man do this exercise with his daughter where his daughter had like these three coffee cup tops and under it was like a little piece of paper and he would move them around, move them, or this little uh, like, yeah, little clump of paper. He'd move it around and there was a clump of paper under one of these three tops from these coffee cups. And what happened is she got it right like every single time. And then he said, okay, it's very important. I expect you to get it right this time. And the moment he said that to her, she had this crazy expectation. She got it wrong every time after that. Whereas before this little girl has all this intuitive insight connection to her right brain. She literally would get it right every time. She'd be blindfolded. He would move it around. This one. Yes. This one. Yes. This one. Yeah. Every time. All of a sudden, I expect you to do it well. Don't mess up. Okay, daddy, I won't mess up. Missed it, missed it, missed it. Like literally, like every time she tried to get it wrong. That is an example of how the left brain sabotages ourselves towards the magic of what we already intuitively know. Okay, I wanted to kind of make that point because it was something that really impacted me when I was, when I was thinking about it, when I was learning it. Let's move down to the third part, which is uh, inside this page 25. It talks about self-knowledge. So what it says, the mystic philosophers of old that the first step in personal maturity could be expressed in the aphorism, know thyself. To them, the education of a man undertook at his primal step, achievement of the introverted focus so that he learned what was within himself before attempting to approach the outside world. They rightfully assumed that he could not effectively evaluate and cope with the world until he fully understood his personal psychological balance. The insights being involved by 20th century psychology in this context through the use of various kinds of personality testing seem to be revalidation of this ancient intuition. But no personality test or series of tests will ever replace the depth and fullness of the perception of self which can be achieved when the mind alters its state of consciousness sufficiently to perceive the very hologram of itself which it has projected onto the universe in its proper context context as a part of the universal hologram in a totally holistic and intuitional way. So I'm going to kind of like summarize a lot of this, but what it is mentioning is that knowing thyself is the key to knowing thy universe because there really is no separation. It all as the universe is a reflection of the self. This is why meditative practices of balancing out the left brain and the right brain can be so powerful because when we have a certain frequency, we are able to then get to that of a higher state of consciousness to where then we can perceive from this higher state of the pineal gland 
intuitively understanding more about our reality. Now, I would say that in my own life, the one thing that has shifted my life more than anything else was back in 2012 when I learned how to observe my thoughts. Think of it when it comes to the third eye. You observe your thoughts. Think of it left, right, left eye, right eye, connected to the left brain, the right brain. And that's how it works. It's actually crossed like this. But imagine that when you are staring at a candle flame, your eyes are focused on one spot. Your eyes aren't wandering around. I remember being in Bikram Yoga back in the day and they said, my eyes that wander is a mind that wanders. Interesting. Have you ever noticed that when people are always looking around, their mind tends to be very scattered? If I was talking right now, I was like, hey, so this is how I think right now. It's like every time my mind, my eyes go to a different vortex, it'll get a different like section of where I'm looking, it scatters me. Eyes that wander, it's a mind that wanders. A very powerful meditation practice you can use is to stare at a candle flame. Even just the way I'm looking into the camera right now, it's very easy for me to focus because I'm just looking at you. Now, left brain, right brain, duality, good, bad, light, dark, up, down. The duality of life keeps us entrained in belief systems. I remember going to that of a Bashar conference where I asked Bashar a question. I was talking to him about enlightenment. He's like a channeler, kind of like Abraham Hicks. And I said, what were the belief systems of Jesus and Buddha and Krishna and all these spiritual archetypes of our reality? You want to know what he said? They don't have belief systems. They've gone beyond belief and into knowing. They know thyself. They know thyself. They know they are the universe. They know and are, are present. They're not identified with the mind. Remember, the mind through the eyes, left brain, right brain, up, down, good, bad, all of these things, duality, opinions, belief systems. That's where we get trapped in reality. That's where we get trapped in society. It's when you look into the news, it's like, oh my God, good, bad, which mainly is just bad, 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 bad. All this stuff's going on in the world. Everything is distracting you from knowing thyself. Why did they want, not want page 25 inside that document? Maybe part of it was because the activation of the pineal gland and knowing thyself is completely the opposite of what they actually want. People are much easier to control when they're not in their own power. Knowing thyself. Now, when you close your eyes to duality, you open your third eye to a new reality. You open your, your you literally open another aspect of yourself. But that's why a lot of times you'll see in the ancient, like, philosophy, you'll see these like artwork of a lot of people or uh, of like enlightened masters, their eyes are closed, but their third eye is open. So with that, one thing that I recommend you do is you begin observing your thoughts and you go beyond the subjective experience of good, bad, light, dark, and instead focus more on observing. When I started observing back in 2012, my thoughts, instead of identifying with them and trying to control them, I started to feel more free. I started to feel more present. It completely transformed my life when I did that back in 2012. It was observing my thoughts from a neutral place. But then you're talking years later, I started doing these Monroe Institute tapes. I started doing my own meditations. And as I did, I would bring energy into my body. I would bring it through my heart and I would bring it up to that of my third eye. My eyes were closed. I was observing my thoughts so I wasn't getting caught up in the monkey mind. And then I was able to tune into more of myself, get intuitive insights about myself, learn more about myself, but then also realize that all the outer is is a reflection of the inner. These insights, how can you apply these in your life? You can understand that when you start becoming more observational to the different aspects of your life and you start understanding yourself more, you will then understand outer reality more because that's all it is. It talks even more in this document about how, in a way, we are the absolute. We are dreaming right now that we are these, these physical separate beings where all these individual specks of consciousness when actuality in a hologram, everything is connected. Just like a drop in the ocean also has the ocean in a drop. So in a similar way, you are connected to spirit. Now, this doesn't mean your ego is spirit. Your ego is always wanting to, to fight to be alive. It likes separation. It likes drama. 
The part of you that is God, source energy, that connection to spirit is flowing through you when you are especially being selfless, adding value to other people, being in your flow state. When I make these videos, I get into a flow state. The information flows through. It's not that, oh my God, Aaron's so cool, his YouTube channel, all this stuff. I literally believe that as long as I am more so being an open vessel for the divine to flow through, which I believe you are as well, you let it happen. You don't have to control it. You don't have to let the left brain get in and be like, this is who I am, this is, what, this is how I do it. Just allowing that energy to flow through. So page 25 from the gateway, the CIA documents that I'm talking about that talks about the gateway experience, it talks about the activation of the pineal gland. It talks about that of activating the third eye in a very powerful way. And as you do that, you literally perceive of different aspects of your reality. Now, if you haven't done this yet, by the way, and you haven't calibrated your vibration, this is one thing you can do to understand more about your own self-awareness, understanding more about where your vibration is, plus get a meditation that helps you to elevate your consciousness to another level. So if you haven't done that yet, go and click the link below, do that. And then also I have a guided meditation on that of activating your third eye. It came out within the last month or two. People read the comments to see what's possible, but do this meditation, activate your third eye, close the eyes to duality in the sense of attachment, still be aware of it, and watch how much your life changes from there.